And we're going to check out a zoo with humans in cages. I kid you not. That sounds very weird. But first, when it comes to sports television, ESPN is a world leader. And when we visited them recently in Orlando, we got a pretty good idea of why. Meet Anthony Bailey. Recognize him? Probably not. But if you watch sports on TV, you've seen his work. My group has to be the fan. And with his latest masterpiece, he plans to change the way you watch your sports forever. Welcome to the ESPN Innovation Lab. It excites us all the time. Chad Henney's going to take the snap. He's going to drop back in the pocket. At this brand new facility in Orlando, Florida, Anthony and his team are pushing the world of sports broadcast into the future. Cut. Very good. Thanks. The technology is really, really wild. The whole goal is to increase our fan interaction and to deliver to the fan something that's enjoyable, makes the game a little more easy for them to watch, uh, a little more enjoyable to understand. At the ESPN Ball Diamond, batting practice is underway. But the real workout today is high up above. So we're up here in the press box monitoring our ball track system, which is this Doppler radar right next to me. Um, this Doppler radar is what's used to track. It's a cone which is continually looking in its cone to figure out where the ball is and looking for the Doppler shift of the ball. Debuted at the 2009 Home Run Derby, ESPN's new ball track technology is giving fans a lot more to chew on. We're trying to show them the, the path of the ball, the height of the ball, the distance of the ball in real time, something that we felt like the fans wanted. Like tracking a missile, the ESPN radar zones in on the baseball in midair. So that's just off the bat, and this is the ball going out into the outfield. To turn these signals into comet trails, the radar is linked to the real world through a special camera system. Just do a couple of snap zooms in and out. What you're seeing here is our, uh, is our calibration, these green dots. These are known points, and once the green dots are steady and they don't drift, and we know we're all calibrated. So, well, you can lose the green dots. So there they are, they're gone. And now on this pitch, we're gonna track the ball. Using ball track, ESPN can already predict homers before they've cleared the wall. But the guys think they've just scratched the surface. If we were in a vacuum, how far would the ball have gone if there was no stadium, if there was nothing to stop it? Over on the links, another new ESPN technology is getting a workout of its own. Very pretty. Today we're testing here on the golf course to see how golf looks in 3D. Okay. Come on up, Tim. It was sports that pushed the entire TV industry to high def a few years ago. Now ESPN wants to take it one step further, 3D. The biggest special piece of equipment you have to use is the camera. And so what it is, it's actually two cameras. So you have your left eye and your right eye. They have a convergence point uh, that you choose out in space, and that's where they converge. So that's where your eyes would normally focus on. It's polarized back to the monitor, so you have to wear specialized glasses. So it's not the red and blue and red and green as in the past. Back at the lab, this is ESPN's new Snap Zoom, designed to take the viewer deep inside controversial calls. We're able to zoom in and really give the audience a very clear, decisive view of what actually happened. Every day, a new project comes out, and we're working on many different things. Some of those projects haven't even hit the airwaves yet. We're looking at what we call an ultimate interview, taking a person from one site and a person from another site and bringing them together as if in, they're in the same site. The ultimate interview is really wild because you, know, you can take people from anywhere in the world and sit them right beside each other, and it looks like they're literally two yards apart. If all these enhancements seem a little sophisticated, as Anthony points out, that's the idea. The younger viewers today uh, they consume their content much differently. And they're a video game generation, so we're trying to merge the two worlds together. And when it comes to combining TV with gaming, look no further than this. Welcome into the EA Virtual Playbook. I'm here in Orlando. Teaming up with video game giant Electronic Arts, ESPN is putting their broadcasters right into the game. I think it's a great tool for analysts because it, it allows us the opportunity to really give fans at home a, a perspective, a real 3D perspective of kind of what players are, are seeing and witnessing 
on the field. Pennington's gonna block, Williams is coming around. Using a custom version of EA's Madden game, any play can be run between any two teams. That's a good spin move. Then those plays are saved and brought to life. If you look outside, you got Ten Giddens Jr. running a clear out route. We're standing in the middle of our EA virtual playbook application. As you can see, it's a big empty field. But on our computer monitor back in the truck, I got the uh, Miami Dolphins offense in front of me. I'm looking at the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, and I can move around and be anywhere I want in the play. We have an encoded jib camera here, which is the real world camera. So when this jib moves, it moves the camera in the EA Van game, brings the two together. And so when he's moving around, that camera's moving around the players, and it makes it look as if we're all together in the same plane. It's a very easy throw. It's high percentage. It's a throw that Chad Henney's gonna make every single time. Now, with all this innovation, you might think Anthony and his team could rest on their laurels for a while, but don't count on it. The medium keeps changing, and uh, we have to be out in front and try to deliver to the fan what they're expecting from ESPN and be in the forefront of technology to, to help enhance it.